about how do you make one of these amazing computer chips that are just, it's mind boggling to this day. So I've been in the business for a long time, 30 years, okay, I admit it. And, and even when I was setting up to do these videos, I'm like, wow, look at this, this is really cool. So I'm gonna share this cool factor with you. But don't worry, you don't have to know math, you don't have to be a scientist, you don't have to be an engineer. Just think of it like this. A chip is a switch, like a light switch, okay? Turn the switch on and the light turns on. The electricity goes through the switch, and when you turn the switch off, it blocks it. Remember the concept of semiconductor? So semiconductor, partial conductor of electricity. When you turn that switch on, the electricity goes through, light comes on. When you turn it off, it blocks the electricity, and the light goes off. It's just a switch. Now you know everything you need to know about computer chips. It's just a switch. Cool, huh? See, the engineers are gonna go, oh man, I went to college for this, it's just a switch. No, they won't. It's, it's a little more complicated, but think of that switch. And the really cool thing about it is these switches are made of sand. And when I say sand, actually what I mean is silicon. Silicon is the most abundant element on Earth. It's a very nice material for us to work with in order to create these, these little switches. And, um, oh, it's silicon, not silicone. Not for lips like Angelina Jolie, it's not silicone, it's silicon, or some people say silicon. But um, anyway, that's what it is, most ab abundant element on Earth, and we make switches out of it. Um, I learned recently that most of the sand for computer chips comes from Australia, because that's where the sand is most pure. There's not a bunch of um, junk in it. Okay, so let's think about the switch first. Over here, I've got a switch. And you can see the little switch is down, it's off. And at the top, I've got those little E's. Those guys are little bits of electricity. They're just hanging out, okay? But the switch is off, so they can't get through. So they're trying to get in, but they can't. So when I turn the switch on, over here on the uh, right, when the switch comes on, the electricity goes straight through that switch, and it comes out on the other side. Uh, so I can turn that switch on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Electricity comes and goes throughout my computer chip. Pretty simple, right? It is. All right, there are three basic elements in a computer chip that I wanna talk about. And the first one is called a transistor. This is the switch. So think of this as the light switch. And I have some transistors here. I'm gonna hold one up so you can see, sort of relatively speaking, how small they are. So this is a transistor. This is the switch that turns on and off and lets the electricity go um, through the computer chip or not. What I have over here is a circuit diagram, just sort of a little, uh, uh, picture representation of these transistors. And so if you ever, I don't think they do this in electronic products anymore because they're too complicated, but you used to be able to get a little circuit diagram, they called, um, that would show you exactly what switches made up the product that you just bought. So if you ever see one of these little diagrams and you recognize that little shape, you'll know that means it's a transistor. So transistor is the switch you, by the three wires. That's how you'll know it. The second part that's very important is called a resistor. And a resistor slows down electricity. It looks like this, so you can see it's pretty small. They actually come in, in uh, s several different sizes. But it's a resistor, so when the electricity goes through this wire, it's gonna kind of bog down, it's gonna slow down. Because sometimes you wanna slow down the electricity. And the little zigzag, that's part of that schematic diagram, that little thing that you may, may not see anymore because there's too many of these in an electronic product to, uh, I don't know, you can fill this room with a map of them. But anyway, what's interesting about these resistors is, you, I don't think you can see this on the video, so um, uh, there'll be pictures all over the internet. Just Google resistor and you'll be able to see the images. But on here are tiny little bands of color. And each color is gonna indicate how much this resistor slows down electricity. And the colors, there's a um, mnemonic device, a little poem, but um, boys made it up when girls weren't engineers like me, and it's not very nice. And so I'm not gonna repeat it, but I'm sure Google can find it. But anyway, there's a way you can memorize those colors. So that's a resistor that will slow down the electricity. And the third most important part of a, of a computer chip or an electronic circuit is what's called a capacitor. And a capacitor stores electricity. Um, just sort of a little charge in there. These guys are made in all with all types of different materials. They're all shapes and sizes. They always have two wires on them. And so you can see there's a variety of them. And again, if you wanna see some close-up images, um, Googling them, you can find out um, all kinds of things about them. But these are capacitors. Um, what I like to describe a capacitor as, so I live in Colorado. 
and in the winter it gets really, really dry. So it's fun, you scoot across the carpet and you build up this big charge and then you can zap people. And the best part is when you do it in the dark <laughs> because you can see these blue zaps going across, it's really fun. But as you're all charged up, ready to go, you are a type of a capacitor. So the capacitors are what we're gonna store the electricity in in case we need to use it for something. All right, you take those three parts, a little transistor, and a little resistor and a capacitor and you hook them all up together with wires very high tech hook them up and now you have some type of an electronic electronic circuit this could be um, inside your kindle it could be inside your car it could be inside your computer it could be inside your microwave but anyway these are the three elements connected with wires that make up a basic computer chip Imagine this, remember I said the latest Intel microprocessor had two billion transistors? How do you put two billion or a billion of those little tiny switches in something that's this big, the size of your fingernail? You make them really, really small. And when I say small, um, we're talking about uh, what we call nanometers, which are fractions of fractions of fractions of size. One um, of the wires that we use in today's computer chips can be one five hundredth the width of a human hair, which is, when you think about it, mind-boggling. Uh, what's also interesting about human hair is it's a terrible unit of measure because people who have dark, thick hair have very wide hairs, and people like me who have thin, lighter colored hair have very thin hair. But regardless, these wires are tiny, tiny, tiny. So we make them very, very small. We pack a billion transistors into a single chip. And in the next set of videos, I'm going to tell you how we do that in 14 simple steps.